the entire ring around the object, and then I hit connect. And that will connect all the edges together. The reason I did that is I just want to be able to demonstrate um, inset a little bit better, which is one of the other polygon tools here. So I'll select these two faces, hit F2 so I can see them individually as their own selection, and then I'll hit inset. Now what inset does is exactly that. It insets some topology inwards from the selected polygon. It doesn't extrude them outwards or anything. It keeps them on the exact same polygon, but it just adds more topology. And then you can choose how much of an amount you want to inset. The other thing that you can do is you can inset them as a group, as a selection of polygons, or you can inset them individually by polygon. So that's inset. And I'll you know, say I wanted to extrude now. You go back and extrude it inwards. And then I could scale them individually, you know, start to create some kind of a cool shape going on there. So that's the inset function. Um, moving on, we have bridge. Bridge is a very neat function as well. So to do to demonstrate that, I'll just delete some polygons. Now, in order to bridge, you actually need to be in edge selection mode, and then you can select two edges and hit bridge and it will build the polygon or bridge the gap in between them. And then what you can do is you can actually add segments to it. Um, you can, you know, uh, change the smoothing degree that you want. And you can choose uh, whether or not you want it to bridge over to adjacent edges. Um, now, you can use the bridge tool with polygonal selections too. But it tends to be a little more uh, tricky and finicky, and it kind of, you know, confuses Max a little bit. So I tend to use Bridge mostly just with selecting edges and then deciding Bridge. Um, I'll show you the function here now if I select a selection of four edges instead of just two. So once again, it will bridge my whole selection together evenly. But what I can do is I can start to try to change it to bridge adjacent. And what that will do is it will change the triangulation. It will start to bridge polygons in a different way by um, changing the angle to which the bridge aims. So right now, the bridge is aiming perpendicular to my edge. But if I change the bridge adjacent, it will start to try to aim to different edges. This edge will try to bridge over to this edge and so on and so forth. So that can also be rather uh, useful in certain circumstances. So that's the bridge tool. Um, now moving on, flip. Flip just inverts the normal of individual polygons. So uh, that's like the normal modifier that I showed you before, except uh, for individual polygons. We will flip the normal. Um, now, hinge from edge. Hinge from edge is a pretty interesting tool too, because you can basically it's like an extrude, but you can choose an edge and have your extruded polygon hinge outwards from that extruded edge. So here, let's uh, let's try that again from the top here. So hinge from edge, and then you can choose your hinge. And then you can choose your hinge angle, and you can choose your number of segments. And say OK. And you can create some really interesting geometry using that function as well. So that's hinge from edge. Um, I'm going to skip extrude along spline because I'm not going to show how to um, use splines in this tutorial. So that will be something for later. Same with edit triangulation, retriangulate in turn. I'm going to ignore those because those aren't exactly modeling operations. They have more to do with uh, triangulation. Um, repeat last is an interesting button. It basically just repeats your last function that you performed. So, you know, pretty straightforward. I won't talk about that too long. Constraints. Constraints is also uh, very important. 
constraining, what that does is any operation, any uh, manipulation that you're running on a selection, it will constrain it to whatever constraint selection that you have. So right now I have constraints of edge. So if I try to translate this vertex um, you know, along the x-axis away from the model, it won't let me do anything because there's no edge there for it to constrain to. If I move it this way, however, it will follow that edge. It will constrain the translation of the vertex to that edge. Same with Y, and same with Z. And that also goes for multiple selections. It also goes for other different types of manipulation. If you try to scale an object or scale a selection, um, it even goes for polygons. Right now, you know, it's being weird because I'm trying to scale these polygons inwards and it's trying to constrain them to some edges, which it doesn't quite understand. It understands scaling it outwards a little bit better. So that's constraints. You can constrain to edge, you can constrain to face, or you can constrain to normal. I typically just use edge and sometimes use face. Um, okay, preserved UVs we won't get into. Uh, that's a little more complex. And if I do a tutorial on UVs, on wrapping, then I'm not show you. I'm not show you that one. Um, let's see, create. Create it just allows you to draw a polygon by clicking vertices. Oh, I got confused there. You have to be careful about which ones you click, because if you click somewhere out in dead space, it will confuse the crap out of uh, out of 3D Studio Max. So make sure you select the proper vertices. So that's create. I just uh, created a new polygon. I'm using that tool. Collapse. Collapse is something that's also very useful. Um, basically, you can select vertices and then hit collapse and it will just collapse them together. Um, you can do that with a multiple selection. Say I want to select all of these by selecting the faces, holding control, and going to vertex selection mode. Then I can hit collapse and it will collapse everything together into one vertex. Um, you can also just do it with straight up polygons too, actually. So that's collapse. Um, now, uh, attach. Attach is also very useful. Basically, attach and detach work hand in hand together. And they allow you to attach separate objects to one another so, uh, and, and make them into one object. But they both have to be editable polys first. So say I create the cylinder here. And I go convert to editable poly. Then I go back to my you know, weird test object here. And I say attach. I can now attach that cylinder. And it's no longer its own object. It is now part of my test object. Um, likewise, if I want it to become its own object again, I can say detach. And then I can detach it to an element, which it already is. I can detach it as a clone of the object. Um, so I'm going to detach it as neither. I'm just going to detach it as its own object and call it cylinder again. So now as you see, it goes back to being its own object. What you will notice, however, is that it no longer has its own pivot point and its own um, object color. It has inherited the pivot point of my test object and also the black object color of my test object. So that's very important to know. When you attach one object to another object and then detach it, it will detach with the properties of the object that you attached it to. And that can be very useful later uh, in implementing certain workarounds. So the last thing that I want to show you here with uh, polygons under edit geometry is, I'm going to skip a lot of this stuff. Oh, um, I want to show you cut, actually. Cut is also a very useful tool. Um, in order to cut, basically you can just select the cut tool and then click anywhere across your model and it will just cut edges through that model. So that's very useful when dealing with organic modeling. If you just want to you know, cut a political, polygonal shape in and then you know, try to triangulate it and stuff later, then you can do that. So that's the cut tool. Um, the next one that I want to show you is, pardon me, 
uh, hide selected, unhide or hide unselected, and unhide all. So basically, if you have polygons that are obscuring your view of another part of the model, when you start getting into more complex models, or if you even have sub-objects or sub-elements that you want to hide, pardon me, uh, I have to turn off my edge constraints. So say you have sub-elements or subject sub-objects that you want to hide because they're you know, blocking your view of the model. Then what you can do is you can just select those polygons or even select that element and then say hide selected. Likewise, if you want to hide anything else other than it, you can say hide unselected. And that will hide the rest of the polygons of that object. And then if you want to show everything again, you can just say unhide all. So that's hide selected and hide unselected. Um, now the last thing that I want to show you is smoothing. In order to properly demonstrate that, I'm going to turn off the wireframe mode. So you'll notice that around the model, you have certain polygons that are smoothed nicely into one another, like this arc here. And you'll have others that are not smoothed at all, like these extruded points. When you extrude a polygon, they don't smooth together by default. So in order to do that, you need to use what we call smoothing groups. That's over here under polygon smoothing groups. I'm going to hide the rest of this stuff because um, it's not necessary and will be confusing. So what polygon smoothing groups are, are this. There are a number assigned to polygons. You can assign any number to any polygon, and it doesn't matter what order they are. You don't have to assign them any sort of sequence. It's just a group number. It's like if you were trying to split people up um, into two groups, and you said, you're in group number one, and you're in group number two. That's what you're telling the polygons to do. And then basically, any polygon that is in the same group as another polygon will smooth with the polygons that are in that same group as them. So to demonstrate this, you'll see that these three polygons here have different group numbers. Um, this first one here has no group number. This one is three, and you can see that by the fact that it's highlighted in orange. And this one again has no group number, because no numbers are highlighted in orange. So I'm going to select all three of these polygons. I'm going to say clear all, and then I'm going to put them in smoothing group 